so I, I'm I start to record now. Okay, uh, hello my dear listeners. Today I have a really exceptional guest uh, on my channel who was really kind to answer my question. Uh, it's uh, Bullion Director of the AppMex uh, Precious Metal uh, Exchange, and uh, it's his name is Ed uh, Pachitz, Pachin. And uh, okay, the first question uh, Ed to you will be. Uh, please uh, explain uh, as to the our your business model, how the AppMex uh, function, how you, you guys make your money. Well, I think uh, there's a lot out there about uh, how companies like mine who sell precious metals, uh, the actual metal itself, uh, gold, silver, platinum, and palladium, that the misnomer is is that we are speculating in that we make more money as the metals rise and we would subsequently make less money as the falling as prices fall that is completely false in our case uh, what we do is we hedge ourselves in the futures commodities exchange in the market with paper so that actually the only money we make is the premiums that we attach to the product above the gold price or the silver price platinum or palladium uh, so whether we sell gold at $1,000 or if gold is at $800, Atmex makes just the same amount of money. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, and how that works is it's basically very simple. For every contractual amount of gold that Atmex owns in the physical market, we offset that by owning paper contracts. So as the price moves against our short contracts, we end up paying them to our, our brokerage account, so when we sell the gold for more than what we purchased it, we have to pay them for that difference. So the, and the, and the same is true conversely. If we were to buy gold at $800 an ounce, attach a premium, and the next day gold is at 1000 I would it would then work in reverse correlation. So the company in and of itself makes no money extra, whether the, whether the price is up or down on the physical metal itself. The only money we are concerned with making are the premiums. So whatever we can buy it for and sell it for in that difference. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. Thank you very much. Okay, the, the second question, I would like to you talk a little bit about the trends in the uh, in, uh, physical market uh, from like from uh, what you notice in uh, starting maybe from 2008, 2009 and 2010. What are you you noticing an amount of uh, what's the what is the actual trend um, in this in sales? What we see going on currently? Um, well, it's a good question to ask. Uh, what we've actually seen is the demand for specifically gold and silver. We really view the demand for those two metals to be unabated through 2010, meaning that there is going to be great demand for both of those metals. Um, if we just kind of look at the uh, situation in the U.S. economy at the, at the present moment, the dollar is still experiencing difficulty. Um, unemployment, you know, kind of has slowed, but it has not really shown significant improvement. Uh, the housing market uh, remains soft. Deficits continue to grow. Uh, the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan are going to continue to drain our treasury. Uh, furthermore, costs for like revamping the healthcare system are going to be just astronomical. And in addition, if you look at with more baby boomers getting ready to retire, the, the prospects for the economy in an absolute recovery kind of look bleak right now. Um, that's just, you know, the situation in the United States. Internationally, uh, I believe Greece has just bailed out. The euro has had some trouble. Nations in Europe, Asia, Africa are having financial problems. Uh, and demand from especially India and China seems to be unabated as well. So we believe that the trend that kind of began in 2008 will continue for some time to come. Okay. So uh, the other question I have for you, uh, can you give our, your opinion on that? Is it uh, you? You think is it possible to actually purchase metal become a, 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 a world currency or world reserve currency, or do you uh, like uh, anticipate the possibility of, of this to happen in the future? Uh, well, as as we know, the in the future almost anything is possible. However, I, I believe last fall. Uh, Russia, Japan, France, uh, China, some other smaller, you know, lesser known nations, they began discussing the possibility of this happening. And at that point, I believe it was in October somewhere, and it was a London newspaper, it 
might have been the uh, the Independent, uh, published the story that these these countries got together to discuss it. Uh, it was at that time gold reached an all all time high. So uh, although it is a possibility that it could happen, I see it as unlikely since the U.S. dollar has always been such a store of value around the world. Um, uh, now other nations particularly those who have a trade imbalance may want it to happen, uh, but I'm not so certain that the impetus is there for it to actually happen. Uh, I believe looking back over some historical data over the last 13 years, uh, the U.S. dollar as a reserve currency has fluctuated anywhere from a high of around 70 or 71 percent down to about 60 percent as a low. Uh, it's just one of those things where it can happen, but I don't see it in the near future. Okay. Uh, okay. My next question will be concerning the market, uh, the prices uh, manipulation. I understand that you're not concerned uh, of the if it's going up and down, but uh, just uh, your opinion on that. And we also hear like uh, about the possibility of the default of the Comex because there is just too many paper contracts versus of the physical matter available on the market and that the prices it uh, manipulated by the bankers uh, to kind of uh, save uh, the fiat currencies uh, it makes them look uh, good for the average Joe. What do you, yeah. you take on that? Well, I mean, we hear those stories too. Um, in fact, I believe, you know, we, we kind of talked a little bit uh, before we started this discussion of the fact that I've gotten a lot of emails concerning this, mm -hmm. um, more so on the silver side than the gold side. Um, but, and I mean, it's kind of been this kind of circulation of the story or this rumor has been going around for a few months now, uh, is that, you know, that there isn't enough silver to cover the paper that's written for it. And what we've tried to do and what I've, I, I've tried to do is I've really tried to look, you know, for some sort of corroborating uh, organization, albeit a Wall Street Journal, a New York Times, Washington Post, mm -hmm. somebody that has just got pretty much outstanding credibility within the final financial markets to, to corroborate this information. And so far, we haven't been able to do so. Um, I know that the Commodities Futures Trading <coughs> Commission hearings, they, they had some of these things and it was discussed, but there was no positive action taken. So until I actually have some hard uh, evidence to that, I really can't uh, put too much credence into it, at least not yet. Okay, there is another thing that we uh, I talk on, on my channel before because this is a really important component of the uh, price trend for the physical metal. We try to establish the average production cost for one ounce of silver or one ounce of gold. And uh, also maybe this include this question, there is, uh, is it true that the uh, uh, physical silver consumption is actually greater than physical silver production and that's been uh, for many years? Yeah, and speaking about the annual consumption being greater than the physical annual production, um, it kind of goes back to the question we just talked about. You hear a lot of rumors about it, um, however, the, the CF TC, or if you want to call it the Commodities Futures Trading Commission, they, they've never taken any punitive action against any banks or any types of uh, individuals, you know, thought to be manipulating the market. Um, the only thing I can speak to is the fact that I have not been able to, to find any corroborating evidence as far as that, as far as there being not enough production to meet demand. It hasn't happened yet, um, and who knows? I mean, we have to get a, an actual reporting from everybody who has silver and is there enough to cover? Uh, I think that's a difficult one to find any proof for uh, out there in the marketplace right now. Um, as far as what the average production costs for an ounce of silver and, a, and an ounce of gold uh, in 2010, I mean, we're only three months into the year, but I think Mark Twain said it best when he was talking about gold mines. He said, a gold mine is just a hole in the ground surrounded by lies. 